Hi, and welcome to workshop number four, Hemiptera. My name is Marley, and today we'll be talking about the awesome world of Hemiptera. So to get started, we'll be talking about diversity, what makes a true bug, anatomy, key features for ID, family identification, and again, you can use a notebook to create your own insect ID books for free. So Hemiptera diversity. Hemiptera is an up and coming group. Lots of research is being conducted on them in North America, finding that they are an important grassland species specialist. This means that they are a good indicator taxa to tell us if ecosystems are running smoothly. They have some incredible diversity and really cool patterns, which we will see later in these slides. Of course, like all insects, the most beautiful coloration is seen in the tropics. There are 159 families in Hemiptera, 80,000 species that are described, 4,200 species in Canada. These are known as true bugs. And hemiptera it means half wing in Greek. Let's look into the anatomy of a typical true bug. When we say half wing, we are referring to the hard hem elytron, which is a hard covering that covers half of the body. The other half is the hem elytron membrane. The most important part of the anatomy is the piercing sucking mouth parts hemiptera have. This is basically the key to their order and their specialization with plants. So key features for ID. One thing that you won't forget is the sucking mouth part. They are long and look like needles. Sometimes if you have a specimen or species you are seeing out in the field, you might not see the mouth parts extended and that's because some families hide them in a little groove in their body. No other order has a hem elytron. If you remember with the beetles, they have an elytra, which covers wings entirely, but hemiptera have a hem elytron, which covers half of the wings. For our first family, we're going to talk about aphididae, which are important insect pests. They also sometimes have mutualistic relationships with other insect groups where they provide honeydew in exchange for protection. Ants have been seen to have this relationship with aphids as well as wasps. There are over 1,500 species in North America. These are sap-sucking insects and they are destructive pests on cultivated plants. So some key features of aphids are that they are soft bodied and the colors can vary from green, black, brown, pink to colorless. They are very small. They have cornicles on their abdomens, this part here where they secrete honeydew, which is a sugary excrement and ants and other insects like it. Cocoidae aka scale insects. Here is a family you've probably never seen, but they're more common in nature than you'd think. Next time you are birding or on a hike, look for them on twigs or leaves and they will scrape off. The top picture is an example of a female scale insect, which is permanently bound to a plant. In the bottom picture, we have a mealybug female, which can walk around. As you can see, there's quite a large difference between different kinds of scale insects. But all scale insects have a strong sexual dimorphism. Males are typically winged and the females are scales. And these are pests for cultivated plants. So some key features. So at the top, we have a female scale. Females secrete waxy like substance and they're permanently bound to a plant. The males have wings. As you can see in this middle picture here, that is a male scale insect on the right with the wings and on the left there's a female with no wings. Female mealybugs though are not bound to plants. 
as you see in this picture at the bottom, on the left is a female mealybug, and on the right is a male mealybug. And as you can see, the male has wings and the female does not, even though the female mealybug can move around. Next, we have a strange family that creates a spit nest on plant to defend themselves from predators. This family is Cropidae, spittlebugs. There are 70 species in North America alone, and they create a bubble nest on the stems of plants, and they're typically very small. So some key features. They have spurs that circle the end of their legs. As you can see here, there's three rows of spurs on their leg. This is the best way to differentiate them from leaf hoppers and plant hoppers because they don't have this circular spur. They are small and usually they hold their wings tented over their backs. Cicadelidae, leaf hoppers. There are 3,000 described species in North America. They coat their bodies with a water repellent waxy material and they're typically very small. So some key features of leaf hoppers. They have lines of spines down their hind leg, as you can see in these two pictures, unlike the spittle bug, which has the row of spines around its leg. This is the best way to differentiate them between spittle bugs and plant hoppers. And they are small and they also tent their wings over their backs. Fulgoridae plant hoppers. There are 17 species in North America. They're small to medium and some have these cool looking snout like extensions on the top of their head but these are only found in the tropics. Some key features of plant hoppers are that they have antennae attached to head below their eyes as you can see right here and they are small and they also have their wings tented over their back favorite true bugs, cicadidae, aka cicadas. You've probably heard cicadas on a nice hot summer day. There are 10 species in Ontario. Different species spend different amounts of time underground. They can spend either, they can spend between two years or 13 to 17 years underground before emerging as adults. Males produce sound using the timbal at the base of their abdomen. Some key features of cicadas are that they're very large, they're roughly 1.5 inch. They have bulging eyes and they leave behind them these nymph exoskeletons. Bellostomatidae, giant water bugs. There are four species of giant water bugs in Ontario. They typically feed on tadpoles and small fish and they are freshwater aquatic species. So key features of giant water bugs are that they're the largest hemipteran. They are flattened and elongated. Their front legs have a single claw, as you can see there. Simicidae, bed bugs. There are sp three species of bed bugs in Ontario. They are hematophages, meaning that they feed on blood. They have microbes in their guts that aid in digestion. So key features of bed bugs. They are small, flat insects with large abdomens. They are wingless and they have a horizontal stripe on their abdomen, which helps the abdomen extend when filled with blood so that this insect doesn't explode when it's engorged. Reduvidae, aka assassin bugs. This picture here is the mast hunter. It hunts bed bugs. The top photo is the nymph, which camouflages itself with dust and dirt. There are 19 species in Ontario. They are ambush predators and can bite. Assassin bugs. Let's talk about some key features. They have raptorial forelegs. As you can see here, when something has raptorial forelegs, it means that they are strong 
and spiky, and they use them for grabbing and holding prey. Think of a praying mantis with their striking arms. They also cannot hide their mouth parts because they are very thick, because this is how assassin bugs eat their prey. Tingidae, lace bugs. These are very pretty bugs. There are 27 species in Ontario. They have species specific host plants and they're very small. So some key features, they have lace-like patterns on their protonum and forewings. And they have slendered and flattened bodies. Pentomidae, stink bugs. There are 45 species in Ontario. They're also called shield bugs and they produce an order from their thoracic abdominal gland when they are threatened. This picture here is a picture of a brown marmorated stink bug and they are a notorious pest. So some key features of stink bugs are that they have a distinct shield shape to their body. Let's see here, they have five segments of antennae and a broad protonum. Choridae, leaf-footed bugs. There are nine species in Ontario and they can be plant pests. So some key features of leaf-footed bugs, they have leaf-like extensions on their tibia. As you can see in these two pictures, here is the arrow pointing to the leaf-like extensions. On the right is a picture of the western conifer seed bug, which is very common in Guelph. And Leaf-footed bugs all have this very long shape to their bodies. So our last bug of this workshop is Lagidae, seed bugs. There are 15 species in Ontario and these are known as milkweed bugs and they are small. Some key features of seed bugs are that they have a wing membrane with four or five parallel veins. One, two, three, four, five, and that's all for our workshop number four, Hemiptera. Thank you all for listening and hope you have a great day. Bye!